Hey everyone, happy to have you here for another episode of Legacy Matters. Today, as usual, we will talk about whatever comes up with a slight leaning toward discussions of preserving your legacy, preparing for things to come, and sharing stories we find amusing. Don't you think we should Ludens. just do this? All right. We sponsored are Ludens by. available at PacSimply.com. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're not sponsored mm, nice. by Ludens. <laughs> we're sponsored by PacSimply. We are spark- sponsored by PacSimply. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Legacy Matters. Legacy Matters. Thanks it's for tuning in. It still matters. It still yeah. matters, Jim mm-hmm. it and does. Sam it does. and Sarah. Sarah's in It's again. One, one day before Sam's birthday. Oh, oh that's Happy right. early birthday. Happy birthday. People are we doing this a podcast tomorrow? <laughs> we are. Sanjeet's okay. coming in. That's uh, right. Kid. So Ooh, yeah, big I try to get your sister to make you a card. Oh. And she I, got distracted, so oh, she has one extra baby, day. My little baby sister. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, well, thanks for listening, everybody. Was that what, was that the special thing you were? No, gonna, it's oh, coming. Good. I'm just going to say hello, <laughs> hello to our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening. Subscribe. It's free. Whatever. If people don't yeah. know that. Subscribe, leave us a nice five star review, or email us at info at legacymatterspodcast dot com if you have anything negative to say. Keep it to yourself. Well, Keep you're it really, to yourself. You're really killing it with the. And then also, info. just quickly, I know. <laughs> just quickly, we do have Legacy Matters podcast Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Have oh. you heard of these Facebook pages? I have. Okay. And uh, Instagram account. You know what they really want is stickers and a t-shirt. Yeah, some swag. <laughs> we're we're they getting say, there. Some <laughs> we're yeah. getting there. Sorry, I have a bit of a cough. Jim, so I'm away in this morning, my yeah. hour drive. Uh-huh. I totally thought of you. Mm-hmm. Final destination. Oh, my God. You know was why? There- there was because two, there was a truck in front of you with logs. There was two different, and I'll try and keep this. I'll try and keep this brief. <laughs> there was, it's like it's not snowing, but the the it's highway is there. it's mist. It's misty, so there's big trucks, and you're constantly like having the windshield wipers on. Yes. And there was a multitude of trucks in the fast lane. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's not very safe. So one had four containers, so two on the bottom and two on top. But mm-hmm. the two on top, there was a space in between them. They're kind of wobbling. Mm-hmm. So I thought because they were strapped down, right? The kind of, but there was a space enough in the top two that I was like, that looks precarious. So I backed away. Yep. (laughs) The second one was a big oversize with the lights blaring and the banner with a big tractor. And he was buzzing (laughs) in the past. Like, like, that is not safe. Right. That is total final destination. I I think about that all the time when I'm driving. Uh, if you guys you, think it, about if a bunch anyone of has shit. never seen that movie, Final De- have you seen it? Yeah. Okay. Lady Lark. Yes. Have. You have, right? Have. One of my favorite. Uh, okay. I know. We're all introducing We're going to introduce you because we'll just... we want your thoughts on. Because I got something yeah. to say too, but Final yeah. So we've so got we have Lady a guest Lark. In. Yep. Welcome, Lady Welcome. Lark. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming it. in. And normally we're, we do sort of weather uh, report. Oh, well, we got weather. You can do weather. Cloudy, gray. Cloudy, gray, and misty. Actually, Sarah just. Really nailed it. Gonna be it's like kind of forty misty. degrees today, though. That's yeah. what I hear. Yep. It's right. a final yeah. destination it day is on the highway. It is kind of that day. <laughs> yeah, it's I not mean, getting nervous. I know. Oh, I know. I I'm nervous all the time when it comes like that. <laughs> it's just you know. I mean, be if aware. I, if I die that way, you have to talk at my funeral. Say, like, you know, like <laughs> he knew he was going to die. Starting off on a high note, aren't we? Our, like, well, so welcome we die. to our world. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is how Jim little. and I talk when we first mm-hmm. see each other. Right. No, it's great. Like we're it's both great. alive. We made it in. <laughs> Everything's day. good. I woke up from sleep. <laughs> mm. You That's know. always oh, a big win. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's always a big win. Right. Yeah, we're gonna get to our full introduction of you, Lady Lark, <laughs> uh, here in just a moment. But uh, so, final destination. I couldn't sleep last night, mm-hmm. and I and I was poking around on the old HBO late, mm-hmm. and and I watched a movie called Thoroughbreds, which was yeah. way better than I thought it was going to be. Is it a it horror looked, movie? You know what? I would appreciate your take on that because it seemed it's a it's a touch dark. Uh-huh. I don't think it's in the it's horror a thriller. Genre. I don't know. Well, I don't know. You watched it. What? Well, I'm I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. tell Thorough, you. Thoroughbreds. Scary or not? Thoroughbreds is about two two young women in uh, Connecticut, affluent community, and they it's end up called thoroughbreds. Yeah, okay. there's psychological a, thriller, <coughs> right? That yeah, yeah. something like yes. that. Yes, yes, I like psycho those. thriller. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, anyway, but it was well acted, and it was it was like better done than I I thought it 
would be crap. So anyway, I'm okay. just throwing that Pleasant out there. I surprises. Find, Pleasant surprise. Mm-hmm. I have not heard of it. I get to put a movie out for once because, you know, I'm always behind the... I'm behind on this. He's you like, guys, did you hear about this new one, Top Gun? <laughs> I love it. So good. God, those planes go fast in that movie. <laughs> it's it's been out true. for thirty years, but yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, whatever. They're remaking Top Gun. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Is, I mean, is going to play a part in it? Yeah. He, he's and Val Kilmer. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Did Val ever? And he's I, coming back for it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's an all-star yeah. cast. Everyone's back. It's right. Well, I can't miss out on that, right? Right. There you go. So, Lady Lark, um, welcome. Hi. Thank you for Thank joining you for us. Thank you for having nonsense. me. Yeah, and uh, for for people who know Lady Lark, I'm just going to say Lady Lark's here, and that's pretty awesome. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it feels pretty awesome to be here. So, <laughs> oh. I mean, well, we haven't even gotten into the fun yeah. part yet. <laughs> just wait, just wait. Um, and for those who don't. Uh, what would you say about yourself, local musician here to Minneapolis? But but what do you? Yeah. What would you say? I am. I'm just a sexy lady trying to have a good time and bring people love and joy and happiness. Perfect. <laughs> well, you That's are. That's what yet, we yeah. need. Yeah, you are yet another one of those people with uh, like the kind, caring, warm, sparkly eyes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. You, you know. can just see the light. Yeah. It, that's. I that like is, that. Uh, you know, I uh, I never really thought about it until I got older, and people would say stuff like, "Oh, you just have like, such this welcoming face," and I'm like, "Is that a good thing?" It is a good thing. No, no, you do. You know, it's like because then sometimes I get approached by some folks, and I'm like, ah, right? Maybe, maybe I'm too welcoming. Maybe I'm, too, no, I'm right. teasing, of course, but um, but yeah, no, it's uh, I just, you know, I think I I love putting out positivity and love into the atmosphere and um, I get to do that through music on stage and here in Minneapolis so life yeah. is pretty good that's great can't complain <laughs> yeah I keep I keep hearing you on the current you know yeah. I love that good old station. current I, I love going. those folks are we lucky to have them that's here? great are, yeah. right yeah absolutely they are fantastic they're so supportive of local artists I know I was just at their um their 15th birthday party Mm -hmm. um, last weekend and it was just a blast. They, you know, bring in artists from other cities as well but also um, have the support of local artists as well and it's just... Oh, so much talent, so much fun, and just what they do in this community is fantastic. So, shout out to the current. Thank you for what you do. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, we're 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 big fans. Mm -hmm. Um, And so far, so far they've all snubbed me except Jake Rude. You got Jake Rude in. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did well, you know, because we I'm calling him he was out. in he was in <laughs> last no week, reason. and I said, "Is it?" And this would be a question for you too. Do you get people that are just coming up to you, and you know, because he's DJing, right? So it looks like he's not doing anything. I'm saying that in quotations. Jake, yeah. don't get mad because we know he's doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. But he gets hard. bombarded with people, so I did approach him a few months back just to say quick hello. When you're come at the in. club. At, uh, I was at the John Cusack thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Anyway, do you get people coming up to you? Um, every once in a while, yeah. I do. It Mostly when I'm at musical events. Sure. Okay. So, yeah. Uh-huh. And it's uh, it's still funny to me because in my mind, you know, I'm just I'm just this lady who likes to go see music. And then when somebody, like, recognizes me, I was like, oh, Lady Lark. And I'm just like, oh. Oh, they know oh, who I am. Oh, this is great. <laughs> what did you expect? I, feel, I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's still, it's still all new for me to a certain degree. And so, but I love it. I mean, yeah. it's such a cool feeling and I'm always flattered. So, so if you see me out and about, come and say hi, you know. Don't be scared. <laughs> don't be scared. So, are you from Minnesota? I am. Can okay. you tell from my accent? <laughs> Not really. You sound Minnesota. I, I can't. Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, I assumed, but. Yeah. I don't know, you know? Yeah, I moved here when I was five. Okay. So, and funny story, I was actually born in California and then moved to Hawaii. Oh, And what? then came oh. to Minnesota at five. Oh. Wow. I know. Because it was just too warm, right? Yeah, right? It was yeah. like, perfect. you know, life can't be this good all the time, so we right. must move to Minnesota. Uh, no, my both my parents are from here, so okay. they met here and the family was here. Mm-hmm. So um, when I was really young, you know, my dad was in the army, so we, mm-hmm. we oh, bounced around sure. just a little bit. But, um, but yeah, then they were like, you know, Minnesota's home. Families here mm-hmm. and good schools are here mm-hmm. and all those things. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, this is home. This where is did where, you grow up? Uh, s- 
Egan, Minnesota. Okay. So oh, southern fancy. suburbs. Yeah. Yep. Just south of me. <laughs> Egan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yes, it's um it's changed quite a bit since uh, you know, I was growing up there. But honestly it was great. You know, my parents are amazing folks who just uh you know, wanted to give us the best that they could and um there were good schools out there and it was, mm-hmm. you know, safe community, so um, a lot of good things from that. So. Classic suburb. Right. Yeah. It, it, it is know, a classic a suburb. A decent place. Nothing. It, right. If you have a bias towards suburbs, then you're not going to necessarily right. love Egan. But right. if you if you can appreciate what a good suburb is, Egan's a good yeah. suburb. It's, you know, it's kind of the it's pretty good. typical. It's, I think yeah. it's home typical. to the newest Costco in Minnesota. Probably. You have folks in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. just, there is a new Costco down there. Oh, there it's, is. It's now the closest one to our home oh, okay so. mm. oh yeah so were you um are your parents in music not at all no no it's so funny it's um i well actually i recently found out that when my dad was really young like in elementary school he was like a band leader and like dance leader of you know it's like fifth grade class but he is if you met him he's so quiet and calm and just like not as outgoing as you maybe would think somebody who who did that stuff um, would be. Um, but he actually has a good voice, but it's never been like a mm-hmm. part of his, you know, being, mm-hmm. if you will. Right. Um, and same with my mom, you know, she, like we grew up listening to music, but it wasn't, um, and playing music, you know, we took piano lessons and I okay. played the saxophone. And so Was we that were, more by your choice? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I have an older brother, and so basically anything he did, I wanted to do. Of course. Uh huh. Because yeah. that's that's how <laughs> that's us younger show. sisters are. <laughs> so uh-huh. he was playing. He was playing piano, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. he played the saxophone. Although uh-huh. he s- ended up switching to the oboe, but I suck with saxophone. Um, so oboe. yeah, so we played growing up. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I wasn't expecting who that. Who wants to play the? I oboe. played the. No one did. did. You? Of course you did. Oh, you did. You don't ask me to do it now, but yeah. I know everyone's like, what? Right? Only the. Only the strangest of kids. I know. <laughs> and my brother is pretty strange in the best of ways, of course. Yeah, so is she. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The best of the ways. Obo. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. But, you know, it's funny. When I think back to, like, being younger and music, I mean, you know, this was the 80s. So it was uh, watching VHS videos of, uh-huh. you know, Oh, Millie yeah. Vanilli and right. the Jets and the Jets. Um, I went to high school with the Jets. You what? did? I did. Oh my gosh! Nice. My very first yeah. time performing in front of anybody was second grade talent yeah. contest, and we sang. Um, what is it? Uh, oh, what is the it, song? Make it real. I uh, can't remember right now. I know what you're talking about. It, it, I mean, they did have like kind of a hit. Oh, totally. I mean, was, oh, they did. It, yeah. That's the family, right? Yeah. Right. They're from yeah. here. They're yeah, from yeah. here. Yeah, they went to Cooper. You just said that, Jim? Yeah. After all these years? Well, I mean, that's I'm not cool. running around saying, hey, the Jets, yeah. you know? I mean, <laughs> but I was uh, obsessed as a kid. So we oh, loved yeah. Watching like, mm-hmm. like the music videos that were right. available. And so we'd stand in front of the TV and do the dances and sing uh-huh. along. What about Terrence Trent Darby? We ever a fan? I don't know that mm. name. Oh my oh, gosh! Okay. I'm, am I having my Billie Eilish moment where I'm like, yeah. we're gonna, how do I not know this person? <laughs> we're gonna oh, yeah. send you'll, it to you. I think you'll, okay. you'll enjoy love it. it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that he had was a couple part of hits, that but okay. yeah. area. Too. You'll recognize. You'll recognize yeah. it. But anyway, okay. I, I have okay, to but, duck out but, of. But I totally get it. So it's eighties. You're you're watching all this. I mean. Oh yeah. Um, Janet Jackson. We would watch the Rhythm Nation like music videos all the time, and I. I've said this before in like interviews, but I remember being so convinced that I looked just like her dancing um, as, you know, this like seven year old kid. I was like, oh, yeah, I can totally do the moves. And my I can just imagine my mom just sitting back and just laughing at us like, (laughs) what are these kids doing? But. But we were having a blast, you yeah. know. And I mean, did you have the video on? Oh yeah. D- yeah. yeah, oh yeah. So you're doing, yeah. Was, was that still MTV and VH1 days? So was that- I remember having like cassette, yeah. yeah, or yeah, yeah video cassette. Mm-hmm. V- mm-hmm. What do we call it? VHS. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There was VHS, um, VHS, and you could. I mean, I remember recording videos. Yeah, yeah. and we probably did that MTV too. And, yeah, and uh, VH, oh sure, VH1 That's... or VH1, yeah, VH1, 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 yeah. VH1. God, mm-hmm. I can barely remember that. God, what but I can do. I know it's like I have moments of complete blankness. You yeah, know? I know. it didn't sound that well, any VHS, and then I'm like, is it VH1 now? Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I I have to. So, Terrence 
Terrence Trent, Trent Darby. Yeah, wishing well is yes. the one. Oh, like uh-huh. there's two different oh, ones. I'm sure you've heard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, this is. I've got the video. And who just, knows uh, where he is now? Oh, I can't play it. Can't play it. What? I wanted to play just a touch of it, but it's on YouTube. But it's yeah, yeah. that's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, that because the second I saw that, I'm like, oh yeah, wishing well. I remember mm-hmm. that one for sure. It's a good one. Yeah. Is it? It's on, it's on know. my rotation. As you know. It's going to be night. on my rotation for the <laughs> yeah, rest of the yeah. day. I, I guarantee you. You're going to leave here and go, Terrence Trent Darby. Okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay. So. So, so yeah, that's that's my my history in music, I guess. That's not the history. Yeah. I mean, little when lady. You, when did you start performing? <clears throat> About three years ago. Mm. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so I... Uh, I would not know... Th- I would not... That's not what I expected. Oh, well, yeah. It's, at all. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think, is one of the the weirdest things about this whole Lady Lark experience is, you know, I'm not a young lady. I mean, I look good you for do. my age. You do. But, but I'm not young. So, um, no, I, you know, <laughs> I, I loved music. I sang along in my, in my car and... With friends, I did karaoke, uh-huh. but um, I never was serious about music until about three years ago. Hmm. Um, well, that, that's not totally true. I should say maybe five years ago. Um, I started, I was a backup singer in a band, but we did like one performance and I was like, that was fun, cool guys. And then um, the guys I was working with were like, you know, maybe you should come to the front of the stage. Hmm. And I was like, I don't know about that, guys. That's I mean, awesome, I'm just a backup though. singer. Um, but they're like, no, I think you could really do this. And so it was um, with working with these two guys. They go by Hair and Makeup Minneapolis Music. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, yeah, they're fantastic. And they are my writing partners. And they just, um, they they understand the power that I can have. Um, and so it's just been really fun working with them and, and getting to the front of the stage and, um, you know, having fun and dancing and singing. <laughs> that's yeah. that's awesome because uh there's something about music that you can it's like art oh well it is art obviously but you can spend a lifetime doing it and kind of never really achieve you know never have it pay the bills but just do it because you just yeah, love it right. mm-hmm. uh and and it's something that if you you know if you've got a little bit of a natural talent or you apply yourself in some way you can kind of jump in at different it's, points right. in life too, exactly, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, how did you how did you become a backup singer? How did uh, that start? So, um, I was at a birthday party, and we went to kind of like this after after party, if you will, and um, singing songs, you know, playing songs like on um, for karaoke. Really, right. it was just basically like we're all singing along, and um, one of my writing partners now he was like, "Oh, you can sing," and I was like. Well, I mean, everybody can sing, right? If I, if you can speak, <laughs> if you have a me. voice, you can <laughs> sing. <laughs> um, and I kind of was like, you know, if I could do anything in the whole wide world, it would be a, a backup singer, a tambourine player, and a band. You know, yes. like, yeah. I was like, hey, yeah. yeah, I'm Just like, that's there. all I want, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. doing my oohs and ahs in the background <laughs> and shaking the tambourine. <laughs> Um, and so that's when he was like, you know, well, you should come. I, he was making music with his buddy, and so he's like, come on out and sing with us and I was like okay (laughs) so you know went over to his house and I had never been on a mic before and I was like can I have a few drinks before we do this because I'm (laughs) so nervous I have no I've never sang like to try to sing before and um yeah it all started with just you know late night singing and karaoke after after birthday party (laughs) Well, I've done late night karaoke, and uh, no one's asking me yeah. to do any backup no, singing. No, no one is asking me. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guy that everyone's like, "Whoo, yikes, that is not." Oh, good. I'm right there with you. you know? Yeah, but that's one of the things that I love about karaoke. Honestly, it is. It's like everybody can go up and be a rock star for that True. song, right? True. And it's not. A, it's not really about the talent. It's about having a good time. You know what's more annoying? And <laughs> what's more annoying in karaoke is when there's. The girl that thinks she's like the big star and she has to make a big production when she goes up at karaoke to make it like this professional performance. And it's like, eh. oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the one that bothers me, the, the one that bothers me at karaoke. You don't, you don't do this all the time? No, you're not. You no. don't go up and. No. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, we're all just trying to have fun. Like, don't try and outshine everybody. Right. Like, have your great voice, but don't make it this big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, you know no I'm, I'm with you. I, I, but. 
There are, like, if you go to karaoke, and it's very infrequent for me, but, like, it's always impressive when, uh, you know, someone, like, some karaoke nights are weekly, and it's the same group, Mm -hmm. and they all get up, and and you're like, holy shit, that guy's really good, or Mm -hmm. that one's really good, or whatever. And, And I have no problem with then someone stepping up and being really bad, uh, as long as they sing the whole song and they know the lyrics, I what I hate is like I even do this when I've done it, where like I think I know the song well enough mm-hmm. to do it, mm-hmm. and then you fumble. And then the, well, the karaoke version, like the cadence is a little different because it's like the right. instrumental, some yeah, you know, different band did it and it's yeah. slightly different, yeah. and I'm like. Damn it, I can't find my rhythm. Yeah. Like, I can't sing to this song right now. That's yes. embarrassing. I hate that. Like, just uh, if you can just finish the song and sing, that's better. Oh, that's your gripe. What's your gripe about? Do I don't have anything? a gripe. Doesn't I love it all. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all good. Where do you, where are your favorite places in the cities for karaoke? So, Vegas Lounge is probably where I go oh, the most. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. Oh, so you still place. do this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and are people like, that's unfair. No. Well, right. You didn't know, strike, and I, that was. Please know that was not directed at you whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. Sarah. No, no, no. no like and then these kidding. girls go. Oh God, no, no, no. no. Professional I one hundred percent know what you're saying. Yeah. And I honestly, when I go and do karaoke, it is one hundred percent about having a good time. Yeah. I'm usually singing That's songs that I'm like, I'm probably not going to sound that great doing this, but I love this song, so I'm just going to have fun. Like, right. I sing like '90s pop music. You know, I'm not yeah. like, I'm not like. Let me show you Barbara my Streisand, yeah, my you know? Barbara, oh, my yeah. Adele, my range, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or you know, if anything, it might be doing Mariah Carey, but it's very drunk me doing yes, Mariah Carey. That's so, great. Do you have a favorite song what, my, that, that you oh, like? My like, go to is honestly it's Shoop. Oh, oh yeah, my salt uh-huh. pepper because yep. yeah, it's just fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I also do it's gonna be me by yeah. NSYNC. Mm. Um, and I'll just throw in some random ones every once in a while. You know, it could be a Janet Jackson song, could be Mariah Carey, but right. it's always about getting the crowd to have a good time and, and right. hopefully exactly. sing along. You know, exactly. You know, it's a, it, it's <clears throat> kind of like a a weird world too, because you can have it. It's when you do karaoke, you can have someone who you would never think knows like a really deep country song. Yeah, like. And they get up and sing it, and then some, you know, little white girl gets up and does a really decent rendition of, you know, some song that doesn't fit their genre, right, like you know, like Aretha shoot, Franklin yeah, or yeah, you know, like, or, yeah. right? <laughs> what? You're like, what just happened? But it's so fun. Well, and and it it's the universality of music, like right. it, because mm-hmm. the musician puts it out. Yes, there's a community that supports it, but if they're broad, if it's a big enough hit, it's actually everybody likes mm-hmm. the song, you know. So exactly. why not sing it? Have you been to um, Nye's? I have, but not since it's reopened. Mm. Oh, yeah. So... It's been. I think you'd enjoy it. I think I would too. It'd be, I mean, I think Aaron, they, our, one of our former guests, Aaron Seymour, is there yeah. quite often. But oh, um, nice. Yeah, that's just a fun. Yeah. The oh. last time I was there, sorry, Go Sam. Ahead. I think I've said this already in the podcast. I was there for a bachelorette party, and the woman that was playing the piano and taking requests, she's there quite often. And of course, what did I request? Journey. Yeah. Excellent. You know, and <laughs> whatever Journey song I gave her, she's like, ooh. That's a deep cut. I'm like, is it? It's on the best of Journey, Jim. You know what I'm saying? I, I, there and I are like, no more deep cuts of Journey. <laughs> right? I mean, right. You know, it's so kind of like. I'm like, well, what do you have? Really have? Yeah. And what do you think she had? Don't stop believing. I'm like, all yeah. right. Yeah. There's no deep cuts. Which well, anyway, yeah. anyway, it's fun. You would enjoy. Okay. It. How did you? So I do have a question. <clears throat> so how did Lady Lark come about? The name specifically, or just yeah, the, the name. Specifically. So, you know, it was. Um, it just kind of happened. I know that's not a very exciting answer, but um, you know, with these guys, my writing partners, I was talking about, um, we were kind of toying with the idea of being like a trio, mm-hmm. um, and we our name was Ladies of the Night, which was oh. you know it was ironic and uh, we thought we were so funny, <laughs> um, but but then you know we realized or the two guys were like you know what i think we should just it should just be you it should just be you they're 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 uh they're much more happy being behind the scenes Mm -hmm. um and they're amazing wonderful people but they're like you can do that you can be on the up front and so then it was like okay well we need to change the name we i liked you know lady something Mm -hmm. or ladies something um but lady lark 
was when I think it just somebody mentioned it, like the, you know, alliteration of it. And then also a lark is, you know, something that you do for fun. You do on a whim. Yep. Yep. And yeah. it was, it's something that fit just so well into what my music is about, what I'm about. And so, um, so it stuck. And I yeah. was like, okay, Lady Lark is great. The little irony behind the name, though, is I'm actually like really afraid of birds, and a lark is also a bird. Yeah. yeah. So there's like this funny. Afraid like, oh. of all birds? I mean, literally, like almost anything with wings. Is yeah. that a thing? <laughs> Yeah, it, probably. is there a name? Like, what's a, <laughs> There's afraid some sort of spiders? phobia, I, I'm sure. I mean, I've never heard of <laughs> Look that. Look it up. Look Let's, it up. I will. It's so ridiculous. And like, even like a little bird in a cage, like you're just... <laughs> I, yeah, birds in cages, like, because I'm butterfly. like, they're going to... Butterflies are little uh, yeah. intimidating. Yeah, they're not really birds. They're not really birds. You're so right. you're not just... going to the zoo to the bird... <laughs> oh, no way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about I, I, Pegasuses? Yeah, th- that's probably <laughs> more... You know, it's so... Pterodactyl? Oh, I was like, sometimes the smaller the bird, the scarier. And it's, for me, it's really, it's like, because I can't tell where they're going. Uh-huh. Oh, God, what's, the, why is it doing this? You and your YouTube. Sorry. It's Volume. the, it's the uncertainty of it. Yeah, I can't, I can't, and I have no control over them, sure. animals in general, but um, <laughs> I know, it's silly. It's, it's not silly. It's, we all have but, our, yeah. but there has to be a name for that. Like oh, yeah, yeah, bird phobia. I can look that bird up. Phobia. I, I, I muted my thing, so Well, we, we understand the lark part doesn't come from, right. from so, that. So the, That's the right. important. Not anymore. We're like, it's, right. oh, it's kind of cool. It makes sense because it's like a, I don't know, a songbird it's, it's or a something. It's a great name. But, no, it's but cool. Lady Oh, yeah. it is. It really is. It, it is. It's, uh, of course, it's ornith- ornith- ornithophobia. So it's, you know, like ornith- ornithology is the study of birds. Uh, so, I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Learning something new. I can't pronounce it, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or- ornithology is the study of birds. So, of course, it's ornitho- yeah. ornithophobia. So, yeah, it's okay. a, it's it a says, fun, fun little tidbit about Lady yeah. Lark. Yeah. I like your birds. <laughs> I like how it says <laughs> fear of birds. Dash, you know, ornithophobia. A phobia is an irrational fear mm-hmm. about a certain about certain One hundred percent irrational. <laughs> I was, they're calling you out. Oh yeah, they're like, uh, who so are they you're to say it's crazy yeah. for thinking this? But you're afraid of them. Who are they to say it's yeah. irrational? <laughs> what if a what if you got attacked by a bird? I know. <laughs> and I also, with my big curly hair, I have this irrational yeah. fear that they're gonna think that it's like a nest or something and just like oh. dive. So by. how do how do you survive every day? Um, it's okay. So <laughs> I can get through it, but every day. You, if you ever hear like a woman on Nicollet Mall like screaming because of pigeon, that's probably me. Okay. <laughs> I feel I just, like can I hear like birds flutter. outside the window? Does that does that throw you off? Oh no, no. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not so severe. I'm not like house ridden and I can't leave leave right. my home. But um but it's just it's just you know, if they fly by I, I will yeah, flinch startled. pretty hard. Sure. Yeah. I get startled that's pretty fair. easily by them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, lady that's, fun, yeah. lady, lady fun thing to do yeah. on a, on a whim. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly. Not lady bird, not lady bird. <laughs> that's a whole different yeah. thing. But yeah, uh-huh. so so lady lark and and it's yeah all about having a good time and you know let's be honest, there's so much shit in the world yep. going on. Yeah, right? there is, yep. isn't there? There's so much of it and. And music can be such a great way to deal with your emotions about mm-hmm. it. Yes. Um, but the way that I deal with it really is about kind of having the antithesis to the negativity. It's, yes. you know, Positive. just need positivity that. and mm-hmm. just, you know, feeling good about yourself, doing the things that make you happy. And that's really, so my last album that I put out last year is called Permission. And it's all about like giving yourself permission to enjoy the things that make you happy or give you pleasure and feel good about it because yeah there's enough shit out there and your album's been well received here I yeah mean, current, i mean thank you i mean you. you're all over the current <laughs> yeah. so which is great yeah you know Again, i mean was that great. did you expect that i mean was that it was a hope how was that yeah there was a, it was definitely a hope um <laughs> <laughs> obviously it was a hope you probably you know, who knows what to expect we right, make exactly. stuff we hope and yeah people right. like it yeah it's always um but you know but I this think, is pretty new to you i mean yeah. what was it like to hear your tune on the current oh the i cried time. the yeah. first time i heard, oh, first time i heard sweet. my music on the current i i was and d- tearing you knew up it was coming up right yes yeah, yeah they were was, like we're gonna we're yeah gonna we're deep. gonna play this on it was on the the local show that andrew swenson does on sunday nights and um so we knew it was coming and we we're actually at a uh, band rehearsal and so we we're like okay everybody stop we're gonna go listen for a little while and see if we hear it 
And when it came on, it was like cheering and tears. And <laughs> it was just like that moment of like, oh my gosh, Surreal. I have a song that's yeah. on the radio. Like, right. I'm just this, again, I'm just this girl from like Egan, Minnesota who yep. loved music. And now I have a song that's on the radio. And this past year with my album coming out, um, we actually worked with like a radio promotions company and um, I was getting radio play on, you know, local um, like public radio and college stations, like all around the country. And just like seeing these reports come in of them playing my music. I was just like, Oh my God, <laughs> people this are actually insane. hearing yeah, this. People are yeah. hearing this. And it sounds like, I guess they're like, they're continuing yes. to play it. They right. like it. Right. Like that's wild. So it's, it's very surreal. I'm very humbled by it, but it's also like this is dope, man. I love it. <laughs> you know, it's you know, it's For like sure. part of me is like fuck yeah, and part of me is like holy shit, what's yeah. going on? You know. And we know we know from having had a, a number of musicians through now that like having your song played on the radio doesn't mean like cash in your wallet oh, the right. next day. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> I still got my day job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It, well, and it, well, it's one step closer, though. Right, you absolutely. Know? Yeah, to being a working musician for sure, it, or or making that, you know. What, but but it's not. It can't be about that from the start. Just no, the fact right. that it's out there has to be just such a delight, you know. It absolutely is, yeah. and I feel super lucky that I'm in a position where, I mean, you know, I joke, I still have my day job, but it's it's nice to not have to rely solely on music for my financial stability. Right. Um, I'm, you know, very lucky in that regard, but, but also it's like, Oh, if I could do music full time, that would be amazing. You know, it's like this very Mm -hmm. weird, like balance of like, it's, I love that I get to do it and it truly is fun. And, you know, this extra piece of my life that I love so much, but, um, it's also like, but what if I got to do it all the time? And it was my forever doing everything, you know? So whatever that, whatever that kind of push and pull is, but, well, I'm loving it. I'm just I'm taking it as it comes and enjoying it. It's like anything else. If you, you know, if you keep working at it, like it, it can you can only do better as you learn it more and you get Absolutely. more involved in it all. Yeah. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, little, little, little break time. Little break time. Let's do little it. break right. time. We're we're chugging right along. It always goes so fast. It does. I know. I know. <laughs> but that's all right. We'll come back. All right. Bye. <laughs> we'll be back shortly. Good. Today's show is brought to you by the Andalin app, a first-of-its-kind digital legacy preservation app that allows you to digitally attach photos, videos, and audio recordings to the places and objects you love. Imagine hearing your grandmother's voice telling the stories of your family heirlooms. Preserve your memories, prepare for the future, and share with those you love. Andalin, available in the App Store and Google Play. Visit andalin.app for more information. Need some help with a construction project? Looking for thoughtful design and honest answers about what is possible and what is not? Kinetic Design Build is a full-service boutique remodeler servicing residential and commercial clients in the Twin Cities. Design and build with purpose. Visit kineticdesignbuild.com to request a consultation. Packing for a trip? Let Pack Simply give you a little help by delivering travel-safe products directly to your door in an airport security-safe pouch. Unbelievably easy and surprisingly simple. Make your life easier. Visit PackSimply.com. Interested in art? James Holmberg is both an artist and an art consultant. His strong connections in the Minnesota art world give him a unique perspective on the talented pool of artists from our region. Let James guide you to an original work that will come alive in your home. Visit JamesHolmberg.com to find out more. All right. Do you want to go on a wilderness adventure with me, Sam? Or maybe you know a group of kids who could benefit from an extended break from their electronics. Or maybe you just need a break from those kids. Visit earthedfound.org for more information about how to get started. For information about becoming a sponsor of Legacy Matters, please visit LegacyMattersPodcast.com. Yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> right. I did. I Do turned you, it on. Um, we were just talking about New York. Are you going to be touring? 
That's what I meant that's, to ask. Yeah, so that's my hope. That's yeah. um, this year. Now that I've had my album out, um, it's gotten some play around the country. Um, my hope is to get out to more cities and do um, a little bit more touring. I did a little mini tour with The Current last year. Went up to Winnipeg, mm-hmm. which awesome. was awesome. Yeah. And then um, we went to Milwaukee. Uh, but yeah, this year it's really, I'm, my hope is to, I'll be recording some new music, uh, maybe doing some music videos and then mm. trying to do some more touring. So um, I would love to get out to the East Coast and, and see what they think of Lady Lark. Right. How does, a, how does a tour work, meaning like the mechanics? Do you hire somebody to kind of put that together? Oftentimes, uh-huh. oftentimes, yeah, that's helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, thus far... Uh, we've really been doing it ourselves of just trying to reach out to different folks. And, you know, I played in Chicago before, um, you know, just f- using our connections. But to do a, a truly, like, proper tour, it typically, I think, well, I guess I don't know. I, mm-hmm. Just for myself, um, it's we'll probably need to lean on um, a booking person to, mm-hmm. to help out with that. And how many people are in your, I mean, I know you have the two, yeah. right? Yeah. So, well, so my backing band, <clears throat> it can shift around a little bit. When I do a full, full performance, you know, I have six um, musicians and then two backup singers and then me. So that's that's quite a group to take on a tour, though. Mm -hmm. So um, so likely, you know, depending on what the tour looks like, um, I'd probably travel with, you know, four four musicians and then myself. So still, you know, decent, you know, five of us. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, that's part of my live performance is I love having live musicians with me. Um, I mean, it's. I could go with and sing with a backing track and it could just be myself up there with, you know, a computer and doing yeah. the thing, which could work. And, you know, some artists do that and it's fantastic and they do a great performance. But I think just part of my vibe is really having those musicians with me. So, um, so yeah, and, and I have built such an amazing um you know, amazing connections with these extremely talented local artists, you know, and it's just like, the amount of, of people who I can reach out to, you know, if I need a horn player, if I need a sax player, if I, you know, if, you know, the drummer that I usually work with is busy because he's recording with, you know, some amazing artists, you know, it's like I can find another person. So it's nice that here we have such great resources of talented musicians. So it's kind of like whenever, I mean, ideally, I'd love to have a core group that I always travel with, but just the reality of, mm-hmm. you know, people's schedules, it's kind of hard to do that. So um, so yeah, but typically, sorry, long, long no, answer to a short question yeah. um, is, you know, it always be me up front and then um, having a backing band from anywhere to four to mm-hmm. seven people. <laughs> I mean, for, for just starting only a few years ago, mm-hmm. you know, give or take, mm-hmm. um, I, I, we have so many music people that do come in. I mean, so the Twin Cities has been, I mean, it's a thriving music town and you found it, it easy to sort of just step into it right yeah i find folks yeah to a certain extent i mean you know not having experience in other cities trying to do this it's it has felt a lot easier than i expected it to to start to make those connections it just seems like the community here is very supportive of each other and collaborative and um you know when you have you know radio stations like the current and um you know just the overall vibe here is to really support new and local artists so that really helps um, give us opportunities to play at you know the turf club or mm-hmm. uh, I mean there's so many venues 331 club and all these places that it's just um, you get opportunities and so when if you're doing a good job and making people have a good time then you get more opportunities so right yeah it That's seems so cool. like the the real alchemy there that works is that they're that people are supportive not and collaborative not competitive mm-hmm. so much you know? right and that there's once again a lot of uh a lot of places to see music so there's enough stages mm-hmm. where you can decide to play you know or you get opportunities to play all over the place which is something we talked about like it seemed like that had gone away for a while or something like that there were in the 
you know, 80s, like you were saying, you could yeah. go see anyone. You could walk yeah. down the street and see someone for free, and then you'd go see the suburbs, and then you'd go see this band right. and that band. And right, those were the days of, you know, replacing, you know, mm-hmm. that was the music I was into, and then, you know, obviously Prince was coming out then, mm-hmm. too. But, um, but today, you know, it's still, uh, you know, I was thinking about, we were talking about the weather, of course, is what we talk about here in Minnesota, but mm-hmm. once summertime hits, I mean, the amount of festivals mm-hmm. and you know, block party type things yeah. that have stages. Are you, do you have anything planned for the summer at all? Um, nothing official right now, okay. but, um, but I've had, you know, amazing opportunities to play at pride festival, you know, a couple of years right. and they do such an amazing job making it such a, you know, fun, inclusive place to be. And so that's been awesome. Or, you know, art of world or, right. you know, mm-hmm. there's so many, and even yeah. smaller block parties, you know, it could be, right just in like North Loop or whatever right. it might be and there always is live music and so yeah there's so many opportunities I mean, Art of World has turned into like oh a gosh. music festival it almost. is it's mm-hmm. fantastic mm-hmm. and yeah the performances that you can see I mean, it's that weekend all day long is just all weekend yeah. amazing so so how would you describe your music for people that don't know oh it? that was a question earlier yeah yeah what is the- so I I like to say that it's, you know, 90s influence soul pop music, right? But that can mean a lot of different things. There's elements of disco, there's funk, there's pop, there's R&B. Um, but always, I think, with a, a danceable twist to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I Just growing up, uh, you know, I remember listening to, you know, Luther Vandross. And, mm-hmm. um, it, and then, you know... I don't even know, like, well, I mentioned Janet Jackson and Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston, you know, it's all that, but it's, um, I have a a love for soul music, um, but I've always listened to pop music. So Mm -hmm. I think the very first article that was ever written about my music was um, by um, Cecilia Johnson from The Current. And I think the title was something about like, pop soul star to be or something. And I was again, I was like, Oh my God, (laughs) but it was like, she kind of nailed it. You know, it's like, there's this element of kind of old school sound, but, um, still trying to sound very fresh and poppy. Um, not that I'm trying to be the next Ariana Grande or anything like that, but, um, but yeah, just that element of like feel good music, you know? So do you, do you write it yourself or or in collaboration? with? So in collaboration with, um, um, hair and makeup, my, my writing partners, um, they're so great because they, they literally will like bring a song to me that, um, is re- reflective of like a conversation that we've had, you know, mm-hmm. over, you know, drinks or whatever. And it's always like, it seems like it's so truly a song for me. Um, and then I'll, I'll help with, you know, harmonies and some of the lyrics and things like that. Um, just really kind of bringing then that performance and vocal part to life. Um, but I, I've, I would say as much as I wish I could just be like, yeah, I'm a songwriter and that's what I do. It's, it's not my forte. It just isn't. Sure. But I love being a part of the process mm-hmm. and making sure that every song that I do um, is, is true to who I am. You know, it's uh, even though I'm, I'm writing with other folks, it's still, um, well, that's okay. feels authentic. Yeah. We can collaborate. Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> that's maybe even better. I, it, yeah. I honestly, I love it. And, yeah. and again, these guys that I work with are, um, they're just very in tune with, with who I am and, and, you know, it what Lady Lark way. is all about. Yeah, it, you know, if they're pulling from that. a conversation, yeah. you yeah. know, like you're hanging out, these are your friends. Yeah. So you're hanging out, you're having conversations about life, mm-hmm. you know, and just, things yeah and that's how they're kind of pulling yeah pulling the lyrics together and these guys you know they have been writing music since they were i think in high school you know Uh it's you know that's been something that they love um where i'm like i've been singing karaoke for a few years you know but they found something in you it's almost like the missing piece so the three of you there's no it seems like there's no ego in it right absolutely it is is they're incredible i love working with them um you know i my hope for them is that you know they can continue to to write for more and more artists too, just because mm-hmm. they are so talented. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we, we we like to say that we're the tripod. You know, we we're the three legs of this Lady Lark um, piece. But um, I feel lucky to to also get to be the face, the sexy face of it. Yeah. You know, and go yeah. up and do right. the thing. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, we just we have a, so much fun, and 
um, you know, I think every artist has their own kind of process for whether they're writers or singers or, uh, or both um, of how their songs come together. But it's, it's really worked well with these guys of, um, you know, just kind of collaborating as far as the ideas go and the vibe and making sure it just feels true to, to who I am. So what do you great. what do you do when you're not? I mean, what do you do for a day job? Like, what do you do when you're not singing and promoting this <laughs> I, new, I was this new say, world? Can you say what your day yeah. job is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm okay with it. Um, so yeah, I actually work in advertising sales. Oh, yeah, I know. I wouldn't have guessed that you know? in a million years. <laughs> so it's that's the other thing is like I had this whole career of working in advertising. Sure. Um, that was what I went to school for, and okay. you know, was very happy. I love what I do, but um, but yeah, now I work for not so ironically maybe but i work for pandora uh the music app and yeah. so so yeah so music is literally a part of all things in my life yeah. um so i love that i get to talk about music and the the power of music and connecting people and um you know also i like to say that i keep pandora free for those who don't want to pay for it <laughs> which is the majority of folks so yeah. um so yeah that's my my day job is talking about music and talking to advertisers is it uh, yeah i mean it's kind of like i feel like we're at this shift in in our thinking on these things you know whether it's spotify or pandora or whatever <laughs> where the, yes we are getting the service for free but like what what would we get if we didn't get it for free right what would the difference be and uh what might the musicians i worry about that 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 there's not enough we have so much talent Mm -hmm. and so many talented musicians in minnesota and so many of them barely seem to get by on even you know even come close to getting by on just their musicianship Mm -hmm. so then they have to do other things and Maybe that's well, fair. It's Maybe it's all not, live but... shows, pretty much, right? Is that how it it comes in? I mean, for for me, definitely, it's yeah. you know, if I can get live shows and sell merch and things like that. Right. Um, I mean, the thing that I, not to not to make this an advertisement for Pandora, but the thing that I <laughs> honestly good. liked about working for them is that you know, from the very beginning, um, the the guy who created it, he himself was a musician, so he wanted to create an opportunity where you know, these mid-level musicians could actually make a living um, by having their music played in other places other than when they can get live performances. So um, all along, Pandora has been has paid for both the songwriters and the performers, which on, you know, terrestrial radio, um, they often just pay the, the song uh, writers. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it was, you know, built to try to make a better place for musicians and granted the laws of the music industry have had to change and continue to need to change to make it more viable for, for musicians. But, um, but yeah, we live in this new reality where streaming is, um, you know, the fact that YouTube plays matter and, you know, Instagram followers matter. And it's like, if it would be great if it could just be about the music and we could make the money by just performing and doing the things that we love. But unfortunately that's not currently, currently the reality. Um, but I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic that it will get better. I think Um, it has to, I mean, and I'm not, I wasn't trying to point a finger or anything. No, no, of course not. Like, you know, before, before, Let's go way back before mm-hmm. uh, music producers or promoters or whatever were promoting music. People just made music and probably didn't get paid, right? You know, at all for it. And then, and then they figured out a way to kind of commoditize it and make money from it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the old internet rolls around, and now devices that are super powerful where you can stream things like this and and new modern technology to do all of that stuff so of course it's going to disrupt all of that Mm -hmm. it's going to change it's going to have to change and i mean it i think there's enough people thinking about how to make it better because it seems to me like a lot of artists whether it's whether it's painters you know writers musicians are are forced almost to give their talent and their work away for free Mm -hmm. and then hope something good comes back to them someday. And (laughs) someone's making money off of their efforts. Mm -hmm. And, and until we figure out how to make that a little more equitable, at least get some of the money back in the hands of artists, you lose out on the ability to, 
you know, remain an artist unless being an artist means you have to struggle. Like, right. is, so you is shouldn't that, have to just. Just I don't think that's the way. As, like life as long is a struggle as some enough, of us, right? Can. That's the way I feel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I, right. I, I, because I, because you end up giving up at a certain mm-hmm. point, you know. Yeah, well, and I think you know I have photographer friends who you know it's like pay me for my work. I right. you know I work really long hours trying to hone my my talent and. Um, you know, when you say you're going to pay me with exposure, mm-hmm. like exposure mm-hmm. doesn't buy dinner. You know? <laughs> yeah, it really right. doesn't. doesn't pay rent. It doesn't, it doesn't pay rent. Fix the it car. Does, right. Yeah. So, um, so I know. And to be honest, I mean, I don't feel like I have a strong enough grasp on the ins and outs of the industry and the laws and all those things. But, you know, on the surface, it's like clearly something needs to continue to change so that artists have, um, you know, they have more control over their art and are getting paid appropriately for their art. Um, yeah, I mean, so. it doesn't seem like the industry has a handle on the industry, no. you know? The, right. No, uh, I think that's absolutely true. Yeah, I, I mean, the 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 rate of change of the landscape around art of all sorts was so rapid that no one could sort of keep up with it or get out ahead of it but and no no offense to spotify i love spotify I, you know i listen mm-hmm. to a lot of music and it's mm-hmm. and i'm streaming it through spotify that's we're making them rich and very little of it's going to the people who actually made mm-hmm. the content and right. that's what something about that needs to shift mm-hmm. so that it's yeah fair. i agree and and there are i mean i think that there are a lot of groups who are really trying to to change the laws um you yeah. know there are advocacy groups for artists that are are making sure that you know if you get played at a, a stadium like your music gets played like you're gonna actually get paid for that right as, you know so but that's such a small uh, oh exactly number. i know yeah. i and know a, there's so many I mean, things I, I go to the football game and it's like wow it's like a step back in time it's like yeah, I'm still. It's the same. Yeah, it's oh, same so Steven song. Tyler's still getting paid. Yeah. Steven <laughs> Tyler is still getting paid. I know. I, mean, I know. <clears throat> it's you know, a small it's, slice. So yeah. yeah. So when you're producing something, are you um, putting out a CD or actual vinyl at all? Or, so and I know there's a lot of cost and all that, right. especially the vinyl. Right. And yeah, that's actually been one of my goals. I'm like, someday I absolutely want to make a vinyl. Um, more so for myself than anything, yeah. you know, it's like, it just would be so cool to have that physical, um, property of that, of my yeah. music. Um, but like my last album, we definitely, you know, we printed, you know, a few hundred CDs, um, but also like download cards cause it's, yeah. you know, many people don't have CD players anymore. Like That's even new cars know. don't yeah. have CD right. players. Right, they don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, so, you know, I can sell some CDs at, you know, my shows or, you know, somebody maybe will buy it online, but, um, but it's not expected that that's going to be like the main way that people are going to listen. If right. anything, I'm, I'm hopeful that they, you know, go to Spotify or go to Pandora yeah. and, mm-hmm. and listen to my music and share it with friends and then come to a show. You know, it's like, right. that's the, that's the hope. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting how, you know, nowadays when I'm buying merch, if they have an, a vinyl, I'll definitely buy it or a CD, I'll buy it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's, I got to buy a T-shirt to support them or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But don't get me wrong, I'm always happy to buy a band T-shirt. That's so I, have, oh. I have drawers and drawers and <laughs> yes. drawers of band T-shirts. So do I. So I do was I. just weird because we were talking about this the other day and I'm mad at myself over the years. Where did all my T-shirts go? Right. Uh, you're same good. With, yeah, you're I've got, good about I've got stuff, a few. But few but i mean i'm a huge fan of music so i you know i've got all the cd and and vinyl too but um you know it's interesting to go to target now and see vinyl at target yeah. i mean and that's not cheap to purchase no. mm-hmm. but no. but there's a part of me that wants that physical thing mm-hmm. because i love looking at the record sleeve mm-hmm. you know and and there's something about it you know looking at yeah. the artwork inside you know a cd case even. right you know, but you God. do get to do that though. Still online. I yes. mean, I, I'm, you know, Apple Music. Like, if you have a video, you know, mm-hmm. it'll show me the mm-hmm. video, and then right. I'm just like, all right, cool. And I'm always watching the videos right. too. Right. You know. So. Right. It is. It's you know, it's an interesting balance of trying to figure out what works. And um, again, maybe I'm just older, old school, and I, I love owning the music and right. you know, paying to own that physical copy. Yeah. Um, 
But also, you know, the reality is I, you know, I have plenty of friends who are like, oh, I haven't bought a CD or a vinyl in, you know, years and years. And it's like, that's totally fine, too. It's like at least at least there's a way for people to listen to the music, right? Um, and hopefully share it. Yes. Um, and, you know, as hopefully the rules change and artists will get paid more for, for the art that they put out there. But, um, I mean, ultimately, it's we're in a, in a world where there's so much access and, you know, there's a way from, you know, 30 years ago, if I was, you know, Lady Lark in Minneapolis, the chances of me being on a podcast or, <laughs> yeah, you know, or, yeah. Yeah. or getting play in other places, it would be so much harder. So mm-hmm. it's like, there's so much more opportunity, but yeah, it's, right. it'll, it'll start to balance. I just well, have to believe it'll start mm-hmm, to balance mm-hmm. out more and more as, as time goes on. Yeah. We talk about this because we, we're producing digital technology mm-hmm. too that's our our thing but as we this is to me it's like the the leap from analog to digital it as much as we all love a good album and stuff the amount of the amount of resources it takes to produce these things in a world where we we know we can't put more into the landfill we can't screw things right. up that way right so but uh what the amount of resources it takes to get an, a song to a million people or a hundred million people it, through digital is almost nothing because right. you can you can put it in one spot and they listen to it. So mm-hmm. I don't know. In in some ways, there's advantages to our digital future, and Absolutely. in some ways, we're going to miss some of that analog past. Mm-hmm. I think some of that. I agree with you. The only thing I would say. Um, the analog past, if you're going to create something physical, make it something of meaning and something that can last. Durable, <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> well, and, and what happens yeah. when... So the other side of it, and this is, you know, these are larger, more complex societal issues, of course, but we try and solve everything here. <laughs> That's right? what we're here for, right? Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, it, it, there's, a, there's kind of a unique human beauty to the idea that, okay... Let's say a million people want your album. You produce some beautiful music and a million people want your album. In order for those million people to get your album, you've got the the people that work at the factory that make the thing, you know, so you've got to record it, the people that work at the factory, the people who make the raw materials that go to the factory, the people who distribute it, the record store people who work and tell kids like little Jimmy when he was a kid what, what they should be listening to. And now one bit of effort, a beautiful album full of music, produces jobs for, you know, right. however many mm-hmm. people. Versus you could go into your basement, hook up to your computer, make a beautiful album, not employ anyone else to do it, put mm-hmm. it out digitally, and no one's been no one's been hired, you know, no right. one's been in the process. And then and then who gets the money out of the millions of people listening to it is that Spotify or whatever, mm-hmm. like, or Apple Music. That's, right. that we, these are the things that right. we have to think about right. how this all works. It's, a, it's that loss of craftsmanship or attention to detail or put, like I was saying put, before I had my coughing attacks, putting out, <laughs> sorry, putting out something of value that will last beyond just today. Mm-hmm. We produce so much in this world, whether it's McDonald's, we, Sam and I talk about this McDonald's, the Happy Meal toy, the H&Ms mm-hmm. of the world, putting out too much stuff. We don't need more stuff. We need things of quality and value. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. think an album is something that... Well, and that's your whole vibe. That it's like you're, you're positive. You're like mm-hmm. looking at... you know. So you're putting out this album that really is just this positive, cool dance That's my hope. You know, forward motion. And that's, uh-huh. you know, talking about, you know, having something that means something, mm-hmm. you know, my last album was seven songs, but we were very um, labored about those songs. Deliberate. You know, yeah. Very deliberate. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's the right word. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think it, it's such an interesting world to be in because part of the time we're like, oh, we want to make all this music. We have all these ideas. And then we're like, but do we just need to get singles out so people still Find care that Lady Lark you. exists, right? right? It's like, mm-hmm. here's a single, here's a single, here's a single, um, versus, you know, since I'm not Lizzo yet, you right. know, it's oh, not like, I like a, the right. yet. Yeah. I like the yet. Um, that, you know, I can't just sit and, and make this 
awesome, amazing album and release it and have millions of people immediately love it. You know, it's like as you're trying to build your your fan base, mm-hmm. like what's the quote unquote right way to do it? Is it just pushing out content but still being mindful of what you're putting out there? It's not just going to be like, oh, any song that we make is going to go out. And but- you have a history and a uh, uh- life and advertising yeah, right, so you right. do understand how those the, how those levers mm-hmm. work absolutely well, that yeah kind of like you know talking to you i think about like you know the difference between singles you know pushing mm-hmm. out that content and then an overall like album you know mm-hmm. so i've got like teenage kids right mm-hmm. at home that that you know when we take a car ride I mean, it's hard to get through one song with them. <laughs> you know, they're in yeah. charge, you know, yeah. but they're yeah. like, check it out, Jim. And we're like, boom, boom. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, well, we didn't listen to the whole thing. They're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, it's all good. I'm going to play another one. Yeah. You know, it's like little clips. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but I want to, I'm, I'm interested in the whole album. Right. But, you know, when you're doing yours, you know, are you, th- are you thinking it as a whole, mm-hmm. like the album? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, along with, you know. I mean, yes. that's got to be hard. It is. You know? It is. And it, again, it's, you know, it's almost like, do we make an album full of singles, right? Like, mm. so any song could stand on its own. Right. Um, but you want to have a cohesive, right. co- you know, book of content yeah. that, that can live holistically, too. So it is, you know, being mindful of both, of I have a vision for what the next album looks and sounds like, um, what it feels like, but along the way... Are there specific songs that we, we can or should release as singles to kind of tease it out and keep people interested and um, kind of show the different development that's coming through? So it's, I mean, again, I think for any artist it can be different, and I'm just speaking for myself, but it's uh, it's definitely something that I have to be mindful of, thinking about what's the what's the whole of right. this, and then even on the individual basis, how do I make individual songs feel like they can stand on their own, even though the intent is for them to be part of an album? So, because you care about quality, right? It's not just pump. There's a, unfortunately, I also think there's a lot of music that's, you know, pop music, and it's um, just driven by what commercialism or something. That's like in any industry, right? Mm-hmm. So you're just trying to be mindful and right. and thoughtful, right? Well, and I think that's kind of my whole thing is. You know, as Lady Lark, I want to always be authentic to who I am mm-hmm. and what I'm trying to put out there. And so if at any point it just feels like this just doesn't feel right or. You but have I, to like, be or people yeah, will not. Yeah, they're right. not going to. Right. They won't connect mm-hmm. with you. I mean, you right. can't. Right. I mean, there, I, I don't think I there's think a way so, to right. not be authentic if you're putting that stuff. Right. Out. But the, I don't know. I mean, the, I think that there may be some really big artists that, you know, can be they do great work but it's you know a kind of a, a fabricated mm-hmm. kind of well together mm-hmm. you know Tar- mm-hmm. i mean when you walk into target i mean i was i wasn't gonna say this but you know i mean i'm bombarded with uh taylor swift yeah, i mean she she's has. on the video yeah, but, on a hundred things people then, love to hate on, on oh, people I, and like, I like taylor her. swift i'm not i'm yeah. not but I mean, correct me if i'm bad, wrong i'm just saying like i'm like well oh, i it's think like, i think she has talent but i also think that she has a huge pr budget machine behind her of course she does at this point but but i mean is it not true that she that she had creative license over her music when she was young? I mean, she started out writing her own songs, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. and so I mean, at some point, yeah, the machine picks up on the fact that this one's like, we better put some. We're gonna do well if we back this gal. You know, I get that. Sure, sure. And you, but you're kind of hoping someone sees you and says, "We're gonna do well if we back this yeah. gal too." That's kind of the machine yeah. the needs only, to be the there. The only thing that, again, I'm gonna be the curmudgeon Sold in out. this <laughs> is that, and again, it's not I against Taylor Swift. It's <laughs> when you have a multi-million-dollar machine backing you <clears throat> that's supposed to guarantee you that number one slot. How does that help the rest of the artists who are actually really? trying Mm -hmm. and probably deserve it just as much as she does i don't know but it goes back to the same like you know if if i guarantee you in in seventh grade on almost any elementary school football team there's every kid thinks they're going to make it to the nfl and they're not Mm -hmm. you know and and we think we think we can start up a, a digital tech company and end up rising above all of the rest of the people doing the same thing it's yeah like I, I don't, sometimes you just have to it, like some the struggle itself is the impetus for the for creativity. the greatness 
Oh, but, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. It's just like give everybody a chance to reach that instead Can't. of having an unfair advantage. And you say you're not nice. <laughs> you say you're not nice, and yet you want to give everybody a fair chance. It's about not that. about no. Actually, that's <laughs> being me being not nice is by pointing this out that there's a whole machinery behind there what is. we think is. You know, there's a reason why we're bombarded with her. Yeah. Yeah. image anyway yeah. i could yeah. go on about it but no i mean i <laughs> you know i well, do we can we, I we should have we some can conversation have a, yeah. over drinks <laughs> you know i think, I think I, it's time to open the wine bottle yeah or, or you know it's always speaking, time for wine I know. Yeah, speaking of wine country <laughs> when you were describing what it's like to ride in the car with the boys and they play part of a song yeah that's that's what it's like hanging out with sarah I was and her sister and my mother oh funny. because they're like that's cool, but now play the next one and then no, the other one. No, we get through the song. No, hardly ever. <laughs> hardly ever. But that's ever. part of the challenge as an artist, too. Like, you're kind of, capturing. you know, it's capped. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, the attention span, I mean, I, I'm generalizing, you know, I mean, but some, I mean, today, you know, for some people, you know, attention span, I suppose it's always been like that, mm-hmm. except I for it wasn't quite shorter, as easy yeah, to push it's that, not as, you know. Yeah, right. yeah so it's hard. The I mean, the expectation was... You're gonna you're gonna put on a vinyl and you're gonna listen through it, right? Even a CD, that exactly. Was, yeah, yep. That's a, a commitment, CD. right? That's yeah. more of a commitment, right? Or a cassette tape, you know? It's like, right. oh yeah, impossible. if you wanted to try to fast forward to a to a specific track, it was like, yeah, no. you had to, you can't be doing that too fast, right. otherwise the tape gets off. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. And then you gotta pull out the pencil, and then I'm like, oh, and then the worst exactly. is when it happened in a car, and then you pull it out, yeah. and it's all jammed up, and you're like, oh, if uh, I just would have not did that. I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, know? now that we can literally flip through songs every three seconds yeah, if yeah. you wanted to it's mm-hmm. yeah yeah we don't we don't have the same attention span that right we right. used to i think with not just with music but with you know all right. sorts of things everything yeah yeah but you know it, it's 100 percent true and i lament some of that but at the same time look what happens right that that pendulum swung so far that we were all in that and then the next thing you know, vinyl's making a comeback. Mm-hmm. Huge. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and we sit amazing. around for an hour or two hours just talking. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. And so that other people can listen to us talk at a, at a cadence that we used to be more familiar with mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. little sound bites and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. everybody's putting out podcasts so we can listen to each other talk. Right. Mm-hmm. That's kind of cool. That is cool. And I, yeah, I think that there's definitely that, that swing, swing back of the, the pendulum. It's... It, I the reason I personally love vinyl is because it becomes more of an experience mm-hmm. of listening. Totally. To me. Like, don't get me wrong, I can turn on some streamer <clears throat> streaming music and get some work done or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when I want to listen to music, yeah, it's like oh, I just give listen. me that, give me like two hours, and I'll go through you know mm-hmm. a couple different vinyl, and it it's like a whole process. You have to get up mm-hmm. and turn the record over. So and I have a question that. about this because yeah. last night I was doing this. I was trying to chill out listening to some tunes right yeah. and i was thinking about because i don't have a record player at the house um so i was like god you know i should really get one but then i was thinking well do i want one where i actually have to stand up and turn the volume because mm-hmm. then i have to find a vintage one right. basically mm-hmm. right or do i want to just have an app that logs into it or remote control so what do you have so I have oh <laughs> that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. So I have one um that I cannot change the volume on the record player, but I do so I have them connected to external speakers. And is that, um, is that goes through wireless? Amp. No, they're wired. Okay. They are wired. Okay. So it's like yep. a it's a turntable that goes through an amp yep. like yeah. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And um and I love I that cuz I, I I think it's still convenient enough so if I'm you know, doing something else, I can, you know, grab the remote and turn the volume up or whatever. Yep. But, but still, I, you know, I have to go and and right. flip the record over. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, like if you have the, the luxury of time to just sit, and listen to something that, on vinyl with good speakers. Yes, it's like. I remember I had just gotten new speakers and was listening. I can't even remember which album it was, but I was like, oh my God, I didn't, I had never heard that instrument before yeah. in that song that I'd heard a hundred mm-hmm. times or more. And it was just like, whoa, this is, mm-hmm. this is mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. It's like, I'm discovering new things of something I'd heard a hundred times um, because of the you know specific situation and how I was listening, right? It was the vinyl record. It was these new speakers. I was like sitting on the couch in the right spot, you know, to get that ideal sound. And 
Maybe that makes me sound, I don't know, bougie no, or I something. No, I was thinking no, the exact was same like thing so last night. Great. Yeah. You know, I was thinking the exact same thing. And, you know, I love this setup that we have here. Those are great speakers oh, when yeah. they're when they're turned up. But, uh, <sighs> you know, it, it is really beautiful to be able to actually listen to vinyl and sit down with good speakers, preferably wired, mm-hmm. you know, and just hear some of those instruments in the depth mm-hmm. you yeah. know mm-hmm. yeah it's sensory. yeah it it's it's fun and it yeah it's just like almost as much as we know we can talk about music all the time and you know that that's how it can make you feel but then to be in a moment where you're almost surprised by that feeling mm-hmm. is just like mm-hmm. oh, it just feels good it just feels good yeah. it does it does <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna put it out there that uh that what you're feeling the benefit of there is taking the time to sit down and do something thoughtfully and slowly yeah. 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 and that you could, you could likely achieve those same things through a digital Abs- world. Yeah, you yeah could. for sure. Right? But, but we have to be more thoughtful in, the in how we create mm-hmm. the products mm-hmm. that deliver that sort of an experience. Mm-hmm. You know, it'd be, I mean, I'm just throwing something crazy out there, but it'd be kind of cool if, um, if a person, and maybe this already exists, but if you created a music playing thing, right, where it didn't allow you to skip forward or backward, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. like I'm right. purposefully putting on the entire album right now, right. and I I'm forcing myself to not right. fo- fast forward through this next song. But, <laughs> right. All right, so this is the, uh, the part of the show where we... <laughs> um, where we want you to, you know, we don't, this won't come out probably for a week or two. Oh, by the way, Paviel says hi. Oh, yeah, she was in I last week. So, her. yeah. Yeah, she, she mentioned she you. you. I know, mm. she does. She is absolutely amazing. Just, yeah. I love everything that she does. She's so talented. And I love the first time that I met her, guys. it was like, it was yeah. just like, we were doing, I think the first time we like actually met and like spent time together was doing a David Bowie night at, first half you know it was like we just immediately just like started hanging out and chatting and we're just like sitting on the couch and blah 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 and i was like sure enough like of course you know we were the only two women of color at this event uh <laughs> or performing i should say to be clear um and it was just she's just amazing she's just so i love her voice she makes it singing look so easy mm-hmm. and like i remember watching her and just being like did you did you even have to try to make it sound that amazing? Because you made it look so easy. Like, how do you do that? Ugh, she's amazing. So, yeah. hello back to Pavia. <laughs> um, yeah, so we it won't come out for a week or two. Is there anything upcoming that you just like to get out there? Or how do people find you? Yep. Yeah, so um, I am, let's see, depending on when this actually. So next Friday, January 31st. Okay. I am performing at First Ave. Mm. Um, oh, it's a Battle of the Bands night, so that'll be really fun. Great. And um, then I'll be performing there. Um, and then, you know, working on kind of what the spring and summer is going to look like. I actually just had a call this morning about a great opportunity for this summer, but nothing is officially solidified. So, sure. um, But best ways are to follow me on Instagram our Facebook. Um, and then you can also go to my website, which is theladylark.com. Com. Great. Great. And, you know, the, the thing is that when people listen to these, it because of the kind of coolness of podcasts, like it could be two years before someone right. finds this. Right? That yeah. is the cool mm-hmm. part of it. Though. Yeah. And it, it really could be, is. I mean, <laughs> theoretically. I mean, by then, you're going to be. Right. They'll be like, oh, yeah. my gosh, she was playing at First Ave. I can't wait to see her at right. uh, Madison at Square Target. Garden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. The Excel Target Center. Center. She's right. got it packed. But, but yeah, right. that's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um. Yeah, but the but the fun part of that is this is also a glimpse into a certain point in your mm-hmm. life, mm-hmm. and yeah. so this Absolutely. will be out there for forever. And we're very lucky mm-hmm. to have had you yeah. come Thank in. Thank you so much for Thanks having. For Thank you in. so much. Honestly, this was so fun. And, and I always get a little. Uh, I know we, we, we're saying our goodbyes, and this is Minnesota where we don't let people actually leave. Yeah. Uh, but I always think it's funny that we ask people to like, how can people find you when we all know you just got to Google? Yeah, right. I know. I know. Called Google. Yeah. Right. Type in Lady As Lark. To just ask your phone. Uh, you, you'll be amazed what you know how much information pops up. I, I know. I know. Like, right. can you make it clear for the yeah. old folks who just got internet? <laughs> how do they find you? It's so true. And, and real easy. But you know. Um, 
It's it, thank you so much for having me. This has been so much fun, and of thank you for you know supporting Lady Lark and and what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I hope years from now people are listening to this mm-hmm. and like, holy crap, that was what was I going on they, back I then. Think that's happen. I think yeah, I really I'm do. Uh, I'm uh, ready to just keep making music. Hopefully, making people You're happy gonna. and feel yeah. good and yep. um, have a lot of fun along the way. You're so. awesome. Good. The world Lady needs Lark, you now. Thank you. Yes. And we forgot to tell you. Oh, and we should have made this disclosure in fairness, right? We forgot to tell you we only do this for comp tickets and stuff like that. Just for to sure, get yeah. No, no, that's, no. The only, yeah. that's the reason we yeah. set it up. Uh oh, like, no what are the shows in? I want to go right. to? Uh, <laughs> let's get them on the that's podcast. <laughs> but y'all should not come true. to a show for real. We'd have a lot. We'd have we a ton of fun. So for sure, bring that's your dancing too. shoes. Okay. And, Ooh, uh, got it. That's even if me. even if you just like to like sway or bop. Can your I do head, that? Like, can I just? Totally. Can I look really I'm like awkward? a chair singer. Yeah. That's oh. awkward. That's yeah. awkward. Oh, I'll sing no. along too. Yeah. Yeah. What's, <laughs> oh a few drinks. Gosh. What's your favorite to sing along to? I'll point you out and we'll we'll have like a moment. All right. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. We love comments and feedback, so go ahead and let us have it. If you'd like to learn more about Andolin and other legacy projects, visit the website at andolin.app or kineticlegacy.us. Take care. (laughs) 